everyone, it's Ross, and today I want to talk about the in-ground figs. We're going to take a look at them, assess the damage, and see what has been done so far. I want to take you guys through the season this winter, because today is March 1st. Um, if we've gotten to this point of the season with very little damage, you can definitely bet that a lot of the trees from this point on will continue to survive and continue to look the way that they look. Uh, I would say that if there isn't a really crazy cold spell that comes in, a cr really crazy low that comes in, uh, the damage from this point on is probably because of desiccation from the wind or because it's just been so long that these trees have really been woken up that the branches have just lost a lot of their moisture, whether that's from the freeze-thaw cycles uh, we have sprayed something called wilt proof three different coats We've talked a lot about that and these trees are really well protected from desiccation now. I want to bring you guys through The seasons thus far this winter time. Okay, so wh what did we do this so far this winter? Well in November 25th actually so Thanksgiving night um, We got down to 13 degrees and that really hurt a lot of the trees because it was a very early hard frost that came in here and a lot of the trees weren't dormant a lot of them were kept, just kept growing um, some of the trees I'm going to show you guys are only really their first year in the ground and that's really not an accurate representation of the variety itself it seems like you need it at that second year and a lot of trees for whatever reason you plant them that first year they just get killed back to the ground it's just it's just a matter of fact it's just just what happens um, so if I have any one-year-old trees in the ground that have survived and have showing some good success, that's pretty impressive. Um, what I will say now, so since we had that really bad low on Thanksgiving night, a lot of the trees took damage from that because they just weren't dormant. Um, they weren't ready to handle that. It was it's just too, too extreme of a temperature too quickly. Um, then after that 13 degree low, uh, there was a low sometime in January and sometime in February where we got down to 6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's actually not that bad for my location. And then we got down to 2 degrees Fahrenheit, which actually is about normal for my location. Um, so we've had a normal winter. And then now, because it's March 1st, actually March 7th is probably going to be the last winter low that we have here in this climate. It's going to get down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit March 7th. So if these things have survived, and it's been a month now, right, since we had that 2 degree low. So if these things are looking good after 2 degrees Fahrenheit, you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to survive 10 degrees, and they're probably going to look okay going into the spring. Um, so I want to talk about now how each tree looks. This is Pastelliere. This is a French fig that's very popular. It doesn't grow very quickly. It's very early. Because of that, it's actually quite hardy. Uh, the tree had suffered quite a bit of dieback up here. So all that's dead. And if you go down actually towards maybe even this part here, this could be alive, but I think not. Um, I think you have to go even lower down to the main trunk, and the main trunk is certainly alive. Um, and if all, you know, worse comes to worse, this section of the trunk is certainly alive. So, you know, I think this actually is pretty impressive because most of this growth uh, is sort of new and hasn't really had enough time to adjust to this location. I would say a lot of the one-year-old growth, like I said, when you plant a new fig in the ground for the first time, it almost always loses that one-year-old growth. And in most cases, it actually dies completely to the ground. Here's Nero 600M. This is another one-year-old tree that we planted. All these trees are brand new in the ground this past spring. So now they they are almost have been in the ground now for a year. This is Nero 600M. Supposed to be quite hardy, but it's actually really not. It's a Violet de Bordeaux type. But it has, you know, some good qualities. It's well adapted to this area. This thing has been killed all the way back to the base. And you can see here it's a bit wet, but this is certainly alive with the protection of the rocks, probably the heat from the ground. Not the end of the world. Uh, I have last year 
overwintered another Violette de Bordeaux type in this location actually right over there and it got through the winter time actually with very little dieback but I believe I covered it with some kind of mulch some kind of straw if I'm not mistaken this here is freshly planted this was one of the two trees that really got hit hard by that Thanksgiving low this is Figo Preto very similar to Black Madeira same thing with the Italian 258. It got killed off in that 13 degree low because the both of them were growing so vigorously at that time that they just got just destroyed. Uh, I would say Pastelieri and Nero 600M looked pretty good until that two degree low. And all the damage you see here is after the two degree low. Same thing with Noir de Barbantane. It looked really good until that two degree low and since then most of the one year old growth on the tree is in fact is in fact dead but the base here and the main trunk is indeed alive you can see it back in here i did the scratch test this is beautiful i'm very happy to see that because i've been wondering if that variety is really going to work out for me or not so i'm impressed by that variety uh, let's go around to the other trees very quickly I have some really interesting results that I just can't, really I can't believe it. Um, very happy to see. First off, Hardy Chicago is indeed alive again this year. This is the third year, I believe, that I've been able to overwinter some sort of Hardy Chicago type uh, in this location, also at the Jersey Shore. This is a Hardy Chicago unknown. I don't know the specific name of this one but without a doubt it is alive in fact it hasn't even really fully hardened believe it or not this is extremely well adapted to this area if there was one variety i would plant here and leave it unprotected it would be this variety here in zone seven if you were growing these things in zone 6b even 6a um, i would say without a doubt you have to go with hard to chicago you know here we have White Marseille, which actually is alive. Almost the entirety of the plant is alive, believe it or not, which is unbelievable. These stems here are not, uh, because these were suckers that have grown up from the base that uh, grew too vigorously and didn't really harden up in time for the Thanksgiving low. So those branches got killed off by the Thanksgiving low, whereas the rest of the plant, which was hardened off in time, is perfectly alive and believe it or not this tree is planted in a raised bed that is a foot high and I would say 70% of the root ball is above grade there's about eight inches of this root ball that was planted above grade in an experiment to see just how high I could plant these fig trees and have them survive we have over here is little ruby and actually i didn't get a chance to check on little ruby to see if it's alive but let's do that now this growth here is certainly dead see that it's not green even though there is some green in there it's not the kind of green that I, i'm looking for it's more turning yellow it's more turning brown uh, you can see this growth up here is certainly shriveled. See how that just broke off like that? That's a goner. This branch here looks like it's alive, which is very surprising to see. Sorry, guys, I'm not really a, a righty. <laughs> I'm holding the camera with my left hand. That, I think, is alive, which is unbelievable because this looks dead, but that's alive. So Little Ruby is a success. Holy moly, what a crazy variety man so low growing I think it just had a lot of protection from these rocks but then again this branch over here is completely protected by this wall and this one got killed off very strange this here is uh, what I believe to be Colonel Lippmann's and this guy is very well protected by these rocks without a doubt it is alive but we did chop it all the way down to the base this is Ron de Bordeaux, and I think a similar thing would have happened to Ron de Bordeaux as did Noir de Barbantane and Pastelliere. 
is that all the one-year-old growth on here would have gotten killed off and the main trunk is alive and well i did the scratch test on this one very happy to see that that's awesome here we have Taramo unknown this guy is planted in a raised bed as well just as high as white marseille and believe it or not this one though is planted with 100 percent of its root ball above grade this is a very hardy variety just like white marseille Let's see if this would work and it seems like every single branch on this tree is indeed dead um, except when you get down to the base and if i get down somewhere over here perhaps that's alive perhaps somewhere down here is alive and this would be a really amazing thing if this tree was indeed alive because if the roots get too cold the roots take damage the whole tree dies and that's what i would have imagined would have happened in this raised bed because it's in a raised bed it just the, the soil gets so much colder than it does in the ground it doesn't have that insulation so this is really an interesting little project that i want to see more on we have two more trees in the front of the house here looks like the mailman's here but let's see the two trees in the front and we'll end the video there we have uh in the front here malta black which is another hardy chicago type I mean, it's very closely related. It's certainly not the same, but without a doubt, it's similar. And this tree is without a doubt alive. We did the scratch test here not too long ago. This portion had died back. Um, in fact, we did the scratch test here this morning. This whole thing is alive, except for this really small growth here that's not as thick. I think the thickness has a lot to do with it. Also, the way in which it hardened up, if it hardened up in time at all. Now, this is improved Celeste, and this guy just takes a hit every every year. And I can't figure it out. If it just... I don't know what it is, because... I've covered the base here with rocks, and it should be okay. I've also covered the base in prior years with mulch, and it should be okay as well, but... For whatever reason, it doesn't live. Um, you know, it re-sprouts from the base every year, but to me that's just not good enough. So I'm really been upset with that variety. Really not been that impressed. Uh, it is what it is though. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I may dig it up, but the fact that it's so early, I think it's a nice bonus. But there's other early figs like Ron de Bordeaux, Hardy Chicago that I think are just better. Even Taramo Unknown, I think they're just better quality figs than Improved Celeste. So I may, in the, in the end, maybe even, if I don't do it this year, years from now, I think I'm gonna get rid of it. So that's sort of the tour. There's not many of them left. We dug up LSU Purple. Um, other than, oh, we dug up a couple of them over here, but other than that, I think everything's all good. And I'm really surprised to see the ones in the raised bed. I'm not surprised to see Hardy Chicago alive and perfectly well. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Hardy Chicago would eventually become a large tree here in my climate. Uh, it may die back every five years, maybe, on a really bad freak winter, but... I've seen large hardy Chicago's in the area, Northeast Philly. I've seen them within Philly. Um, I've seen them in Princeton, New Jersey. You know, I've seen them everywhere. So uh, pretty much if you guys want to grow figs here in a cold climate, I don't know why there's still some of you guys out here that don't believe that you can in the ground. Um, this year, uh, because of the success, I think that I can potentially have whether or not these trees have died back to the ground so let's say hardy chicago died back all the way to the base and we lost a lot of that wood it would then re-sprout from the base and if i can give this tree a lot of heat uh, an increased metabolism by planting them in a raised bed by chance or giving them some nice thermal mass whether that's from rocks or from other materials like the house these guys are gonna be supercharged, man. 
they're going to grow so quickly and put out figs so quickly that uh, it's not really going to matter if these things get through the winter or not. If you got the right variety, you give them enough heat. We include some other techniques called pinching, which is an absolute necessity. Pinching here, I've done tons of videos on that. Same thing with thinning out the branches. If you don't thin out the branches, have fewer thinning, fewer fruiting branches to allow you to have thicker wood to then put that fruit out quicker, you're just not gonna do it. Uh, it's just not gonna work for you. So there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of things you need to know and figure out how to do it, but it's very possible. I mean, it's, it, nothing bothers them too. So it's like, oh yeah, you gotta pinch off some tips. You gotta thin out some branches, but it's like, you know, very little work for such an amazing fruit. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it's just a real great note of positivity, I think, from this video and from the future of growing figs in zone seven. Um, two degree Fahrenheit low. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. I'm getting a little sick out here, so <laughs> catch you guys later.